Hi, my name is Matt Uckerman, and today I'm talking to you about an open source platform for hearing research. So the community has a number of needs. We need high quality calibrated sound stimuli and recordings. Our work needs to be reproducible. We need to customize whatever we're using, the hardware, so we can test new ideas and new test protocols. And we need broad collaboration across labs to access varied populations. And so what I have right now from commercial hearing test systems uh, really high quality calibrated sound stimuli and noise recordings, but we have a problem with disparate data structures and formats. It's difficult to customize and high costs. This all limits collaboration. So what we want from an open hearing research platform, well, we like open source because it, everything is easily customizable and transparent. We want high performance. It needs to be about the same as the commercial systems. We'd like it to be lower cost because that gives us larger studies across more diverse populations. We want it to be a validated system so that we can increase clinical transition of new test paradigms. Uh, we'd like a nice open data repository so we can share data amongst each other, improve transparency, reproducibility. And we want a community that works around uh, a system so that we can increase collaboration and productivity. And so if we had access to such an open source research platform, this will expand uh, the outreach, the reach of hearing research uh, across labs with, uh, that are research limited and give everybody access to these high quality tools. So what do we have today? Today we have uh, Tapsent, which is a software platform. We have the Timpin, which is a hardware platform. And we are working on an open science data hub and the Orin probe. All of these we'll talk about in more detail. So Tapsent is an open source software platform. The idea is that researchers create um, test protocols that they can send to administrators. Administrators can deploy these to multiple sites uh, and different subjects who then take the tests and then push their data to a common data repository, which is really a nice core of this thing. The idea here is to take the effort of administrating these tests off of the researcher to make it easier to deliver uh, these studies. Then there's Timpin. Timpin is an audio processing hardware library, uh, hardware system. It's all open source, both the electronic designs and the, the packaging, everything, and the, including the firmware. So you can change whatever you need to change. Uh, here are the specifications. The big thing here is that there's expansion headers for easy customization. Timpin was originally designed for hearing aid research. And so that's an example of here, but folks have used it for all kinds of things. Uh, like noise sampling with an uh, off-the-shelf uh, microphone, uh, or even audiometry. The Open Science Data Repository, this is something we're currently working on. And so the idea here is that you'd be able to upload your data directly from TAPS, and then you'll be able to access test protocols developed by others. You can try them out, make your own test protocols, share them with the community, uh, also perform some basic analytics on the data. And so what we're currently working on is we're developing the data schema and data structure, which is very important because we need to be able to support a wide range of measurements, but still have it all work together. We're also working on the Orin. This is a in-ear probe for wideband acoustic emittance and autoacoustic emissions. It basically integrates four low noise MEMS microphones and two speakers. And so the rest of the talk is really focused on the Orin probe. The version one probe uh, is seen here. You can see it's quite rough. Uh, and so the results in the next sections are from this version zero probe. So how do you calibrate something like the Orin? Well, we start with a plane wave assumption. We assume that uh, inside the tube, it's a plane wave. And so that's the equation for it. You have a forward traveling wave and a reverse traveling wave. Then we say that one of these microphones have a zero phase shift. So that'll be a reference microphone. So one of these four down here. Uh, we also assume that the geometry doesn't affect it. So if you put in different ears, different caverns, uh, the, make, the mic phase and amplitude calibration doesn't change. And we assume a constant absorption coefficient for air. So it's a two-step approach. First, we do a relative calibration, and then we do uh, absolute amplitude calibration. And the relative calibration needs at least three mics and two tubes. And then with the amplitude calibration, you need a reference microphone. And so this is the piece that we're still working on in terms of calibration, trying to figure out how to do this uh, in an easier way for folks with um, commercial off-the-shelf microphones. Uh, everybody loves linear algebra, so this is my linear algebra slide. 
Uh, you can pause the video if you want to see the details here, but this is how the relative calibration works mathematically. Um, these are the results of the relative calibration. So what you see here on the left is a plot frequency versus the uh, correction and phase and amplitude. And so there are three lines here, one for each uh, microphone uh, relative to the fourth one. Uh, the, the darker lines here are smoothed uh, results, and then the raw corrections are the colored lines underneath. Uh, the plot here on the right shows you uh, a, a sanity check. So what we do here is we use two of the mics to predict the fourth mic. And so we can see really good agreement up until about eight kilohertz. Uh, then the next step is to um, do the amplitude calibration. So what this plot shows is again frequency versus the the amplitude calibration for a single mic uh, for four different tubes. And so ideally these colored uh, lines would all uh, be in the same place, um, but the black line here is the average uh, of these four, and so that's the actual calibration used. So if you use that black line with the full calibration, again a sanity check. Now what we do is we use the microphones, what we've measured in, in the Orin, to predict the reference microphone, and that does very well up to about three kilohertz. And then if we take this previous plot, we look at the difference between pressures. We put it on dB scale for all of the uh, different caverns. We see this plot, and again, it does pretty well up into about three kilohertz. So why doesn't it do be, uh, well beyond that? Um, a couple of reasons. The, as I said, the initial prototype with Russ uh, was pretty rough. Um, and so we decided to to basically make a better probe, and that is the version one design. And so in this version, we're planning to release all of this information as open source, the, the enclosures, as well as the, the board layouts and so forth, uh, including any kind of software that we had a right to calibrate the probe, uh, as well as our calibration data and so forth. So uh, to conclude here, we're working on an open source hearing research platform. It builds on a number of mature technologies, Tapsent and Tippin. We're working on an open science repository that should enable a better collaboration and reproducibility of our research. And we're also working on this Oren probe that will uh, enable new diagnostic methods. And so if you have any feedback for us, um, the Oren probe will eventually be in the Tippin website, so you can give us any feedback on the Tippin forum. Uh, and this work is supported by an IDCD grant. And I'm available for any questions. Thanks very much.